fuck is everyone doing it? The platforms, the agencies are here to get the money of the brands. The brands are here to get awards to justify to their boards that it works. Like what are we doing here? Like who wants to talk about the truth? Half the people here are to drink rose and fucking jerk off for a week. We have to also recognize that this is one big sales conference. This isn't about creativity. That's bad, like I don't want that for this industry. Like what are we doing here? One of the great values of Can is that it's a unique opportunity to see lots of people over a condensed period of time. Going to events and doing face-to-face where lots of like-minded individuals are there is always a good business strategy. When I think about the way I came up the game, my courage to say hello to anyone I admired or wanted to be associated with was always there. When you have a balance of humility and confidence in approaching people that you admire at an event like Can, you were able to get the full enjoyment out of it. Find that balance, but never ever leave an event like Can with regret. Landing back home on the following Monday or weekend and saying, I wish I would have, is always the wrong strategy at Can. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Very good, very good. good. talk to you a little bit about today was actually to have Gary give some insights into how he's seeing the world of marketing sort of evolve. The 50 to 100,000 people that are here this week, I may be the only person, and I believe this by the way, that believes that organic social media is disproportionately the primary most important part of a marketing mix. That the top five to seven brands within your portfolio need to be posting dozens of social media ads a day to dozens of consumer segmentations. I think the biggest issues for big brands is not awareness. Awareness is not the issue in this little cabana. It's relevance. All right, we got some meat in and we got out of there in time. Good to see, see you. you. How you been? I'm really good, how are you? I like the button game, brother. You, Such a pleasure, yeah. real pleasure yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, looking forward to it. I will tell you something, I have two daughters, 22 and 26. What's coming on my feed is what they need to know now, and, and the urgency for them to get jobs, and I send them everything that you do. Thank you. It's fucking amazing. Thank you. Of course, I know what. Let's get started. Get started. Yeah. I don't think people understand how many SMBs fully and only survive on Google search ads. The combo of SEO and SEM is the foundation to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of businesses, with a massive looming change to search. The reason there are so many small businesses around, especially in America, but around the world, that are called triple A dry cleanings, or triple A this, is because you would show up first in the yellow pages, because it was alphabetical, and so in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, everybody started changing their names to AAA insect repeller and AAA, like that is literally the reason that AAA is one of the most famous names of a business around the world. And then obviously search, I mean search changed my family business. I bought the word wine for five cents, uh, the word wine, not even a long tail, wine for five cents uh, the day it came out. Went to 10 cents pretty fast as a floor on Google in the first six months. But search built by dad's business. That was fun. Yeah, it was super fun I, You know, it's funny, we started this like three or four years ago. Like, it's hard to get deep, deep, because I came for the first six, seven years and consumed a lot of this. I'm like, okay, but like, can we go to 201 or 301? And like, this was fun. Like this is, yeah, this gets in it. Harrison from Charity Water. Let's clap it up for this man. Almost 20 years ago in a bar in Manhattan where we got to know each other and he said something very nice to me at the end of the dinner. Gary, I've got a good read on you. You're a good guy. You're gonna go out and build for yourself and you're gonna make some money. And then I really believe, and this is him literally 20 years ago saying, I believe you'll give 
a lot of that money away and try to change the world in a good way. And then he said words I will never forget as I stand here tonight. He goes, why not start now? There are 700 million people in the world that don't have access to clean water. Almost 10% of our earth. And so I've been very honored to be part of the journey, being a well member. VaynerX, our company, is donating $10 million over the next 10 years. No, we're in both. We're giving 10 million over 10 years. Why now? A combination of a couple things. One, both from creators and from brands, Mm -hmm. where I live in both of those worlds, I could feel the tension. This whole movement that I talk about in the book about the TikTokification of social media, Yeah, you could feel like from the incumbents of creator land, they can feel it's harder to get views. And the big brands are feeling that brand is starting to actually be built in social in a way that makes them uncomfortable. It's less television, it's more social, and I always write when, I'm, uh, when I feel like I can provide something, mm-hmm. and so it felt like the confusion of the current moment we're in with social yeah. was a, an opportunity to help people. Okay. What do you want people's one takeaway to be? If they get one thing away from the book, what would that be? that organic social media creative is disproportionately underestimated by almost everybody on earth. And that there's a substantial strategy and skill set to be good at it, yeah. not yeah. Happy Tuesday or a photo yeah. of three of us can, yay. Like it's, 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 not, it's not spray and pray, it's not throw against the wall and see what sticks, it's not matching luggage to your campaign, mm. it is the punchline. I think by far the best part of Can is reconnecting with friends and making new friends. I think the best part of this industry is the people. And I think the one takeaway is this industry continues to disrespect social media creative at a level that makes no sense when you think about actual business. And I think it overvalues the medium of television and undervalues the medium of social media. And that would be the one thing that I would want for people because the second they make that shift, their actual business goes up which uh, eliminates the cynicism of marketing. Awesome, thank Thank you you. so much. I'm Nicole Perlitano, the CMO at Tubi, and I'm with Gary Vaynerchuk, the CEO of VaynerX, best-selling author. This man makes a lot of bets and has a vision for where things are going before they actually start to happen. The distribution of creative is changing. And this has always been the thing that I've been most fascinated by, which is, why do we hold on to yesterday in the face of today's truth? You know, how could you possibly not understand the relationship between social and streaming? Really, for the business people in the room, it's very clear that the way we're going to advertise on streaming service looks a lot more like social. What people don't understand is it's eventually gonna be all of your turns. VaynerMedia, we've come and disrupted the industry heavily. Well, guess what? Because we make more quality creative at scale for social. I don't know if you heard, but AI creative is a problem for me. Like, nobody's safe. Technology doesn't give a shit about your feelings. And so I think, to answer your question, when will it change? It only changes in pain. And uh, I think a lot of that is on the horizon because the advancements of technology, that's what it does. So I think for all of you, especially for your own career, you need to think about what's the commoditization of you. Hey, nice to meet you. Hey, how are you? I love it. I love it. What's up, what's up? So like, what's your advice to us? Yeah, we're kind of coming into the new make. world, right? Make. Mm-hmm. Make shit. Sure. Yeah. You, you, you have no barriers. Just like I was talking about how the world changed. Make shit and put it out. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't resume it. Make. The people that make have it come to them. 
You got it? Yes. Like, if, whatever you want, whatever your goals are, if you make stuff and put it out, if it does well, it will come to you. Is everyone excited about the Olympic torch? That's what all that cheering was. Yeah. I thought it was that really good point I made about <laughs> creator arbitrage. Patrick, I'm really excited for you to read this. The argument I make here is that organic social, because of how strong the algorithms are, are an incredible indicator to mitigating creative risk, mm -hmm. which then can lead to a better measurement opportunity for sales and brand. You'll, you'll, I think you'll get it. I'm jealous. I want <laughs> 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 to meet you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, One more up. You. One more? Yep. Thank you for joining. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, chairman of VaynerX. A lot of familiar faces and friends. I just want to thank you. I know there's a lot going on this week and uh, we really genuinely appreciate you us joining us for lunch. Uh, I thought it would be a, a nice opportunity for all of us to hear the incredible wisdom from this man and I, I think uh, where he's taking it is, is a real worthwhile conversation, especially in a very chaotic week. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's give a huge round of applause for this legend right here to the left of me. So for 20 years, I've been obsessed with uh, leadership and well-being. And so what we look at is yeah. measurable ways to see corporate well-being Joyful employees, yeah. employees automatically translates into happy customers. Yeah. Happy customers automatically translates into happy investors, which is a happy business. So that's the basis. But corporate well-being is also about leadership. But if the leader uh, ignores an employee or part of his team, then the rate of disengagement is about 45%. But if you notice a single strength the rate of disengagement falls to less than 1%. In the US, we lose $300 billion from disengaged and actively disengaged employees. Actively disengaged means they are unhappy. If you have somebody who's happy uh, and noticed for their strengths, then um, that's a good story. And people don't buy products, they don't buy services, they buy a story. The best companies in the world are inspiring stories. <laughs> this kind of thing's very helpful to me. I agree. Just, yeah, I was watching you while he was talking. No, 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 definitely. I'm, I'm paying I'm attention. Coming, I'm coming up with a whole different approach. Yeah, I think, I think, that, I think it's. I, sit, sit. Story. You have to change your perspective. You can't change how you're gonna interact with people if you have the feeling. You think they're gonna listen because they're scared? It's not how people work. That's not what people want. They want positive reinforcement. What you have to work on is not being fake positive. It's being I real know, positive. Marketing executives and entertainment figures are gathering in Cannes this week for the annual Cannes Lions Festival. This year, industry figures are highlighting the human element and creativity in advertising as the sector faces pressure from AI. Well, you can see she's parked her boat, she's on the quay, and she's got a guest with her now. Tanya Breyer joins us now. Steve, thank you so much. Yes, I wish I could say it's my boat. It's actually my guest boat, Gary Vaynerchuk. Thank you so much for having me on your boat here this morning, Gary. Of course, AI is a big theme, how it's disrupting the advertising landscape. Are marketers fearful, do you think? I think humans are fearful. You know, when new technology comes along, we're scared. Um, when electricity was invented, people said that there were demons in it, and most people didn't put it in their home yet. And I, all the modern technology, social networks, computers, cell phones, people were comfortable with their Blackberry before the iPhone. And so, yeah, I think there's, there's reservations. Obviously, an advertising industry like it's a can is not as deeply technically sound as, let's say, Silicon Valley. So there's a lot of misunderstanding. And look, it's also a massive technology where there's still a lot to figure out. So 
Yeah, I think fear is probably 90% of it. And then the 10% that are optimistic and on the offense, they tend to be the ones that win. That's amazing. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. Fabulous as ever. Amazing. Gorgeous. (laughs) Just, it really is actually. It's really amazing. I know. Incredible. All right, we're continuing with marketing for the now. Michelle, why don't you tell everybody who you are and what you do? Sure. Hello, my name is Michelle Aragon. I lead brand marketing and strategy at Spectrum Reach, which is the advertising sales division of Charter Communications. It's funny, like as a company, video company, we want to do more video. Don't even get me started. (laughs) You you just said something that has been, do you know that it drives me crazy that the social network apps themselves stink at social media marketing? It is, I I love you so much because that triggered something (laughs) I haven't thought about in a little while. It drives me crazy. Facebook's <laughs> Facebook Uh-oh. account, Triggered. Snaps, <laughs> Snap Spotlight account, X's X account. Even within their own damn platform, they're not doing best practices. So that's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, thank you so much for letting me do this. Happy to do it. Thank you for switching us from a public beach to a private beach. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. That's mother nature. Yeah. I was I was hyped for no, the dude, uh, I was hyped for the beach. Amazon Prime and Amazon is a monster that is gonna unleash on the world that's gonna be gnarly. You're gonna watch shows and everything's gonna be shoppable. In five to seven years as the tech stack gets done yeah. and as consumer behavior, you're gonna literally be watching Emily in Paris and you can pause the screen and buy her hat on Amazon in two seconds. It's gonna be no friction. I'm gonna be watching the Jets on Amazon Prime and when a player, a new rookie, makes a great play and I'm gonna buy his jersey on the spot. It's gonna be frictionless, frictionless. You have to have really crazy technology to know which brand this is. That's coming. And you know how subtle it is? This can be any fucking brand. Yeah. And for the, for the technology to know, no, by the stitching, like you know how insane that is? Yeah. That they're gonna be able to map that and somebody can buy those green pants in the middle of this podcast, it's fucking profound. Well, you know, it's funny, that's, that's somebody just said something to me, uh, the COO of LinkedIn, the number two at LinkedIn was in line. We've interacted, but he, I have not, I don't really know him, we're in line to that event. He goes, you know what I appreciate about you? I'm like, I'm like tell me. <laughs> he, goes, um, he goes, I've always in my whole career appreciated people that can take complicated things and break them down and make them understandable. He goes, that is your gift. And I, it, I it believe that gift. too. The fact that now at 48 years old, there is a substantial amount of human beings that walk around the earth that are asked, what's it really like to work for Gary? Or what's he really like? And that I know that 93.7% of them have incredibly good things to say. And that is by far my biggest accomplished profession. Been stuck here in a bed for days. I've been staring at the teller.